now. Gulliver, thank you uh, for being with us. Uh, you're in Bucha, the uh, scene, of course, of those killings, those massacres. How is the situation there now? Well, right now I'm in the centre of Bucha and I think it's fair to say the town is bustling with life. I'm in front of a supermarket which is open and pretty well stocked. Other shops around the town are open by no means all, but more every day are opening up and more people are returning. Uh, to this town every day, they say. Um, it's really an astonishing contrast with what the scene was here um, when I first came after the Russians had left the area at the beginning of April, where there were burnt out cars all over the place, armored vehicles all over the place, um, large amounts of uh, just, you know, the, the, the wreckage of war, basically. The cleanup operation has been astonishingly rapid. Of course, there is damage to infrastructure that is going to take much longer than just a few weeks to repair, but it's Irpin and Hostomel actually that have more damage to infrastructure, to buildings compared to those neighbouring towns. There is a large part of Bucha that is actually still intact. But overall, Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, estimates the damage to Ukraine's infrastructure just in the first three months of the war at more than $600 billion worth. And of course, the war is still going on. Whilst Bucha is now calm, though traumatised, we know that towns in the Donbass are probably suffering similar things to what um, happened here uh, in Bucha in March. Towns actually not only in the Donbass, but also in the occupied parts of southern Ukraine. So this war is still very much going on. And despite the appearances of a bustling springtime calm town, I don't think very many people here um, feel uh, calm in their spirits, if you like. Uh, although the people I spoke to this morning all expressed uh, optimism about Ukraine's chances of ultimate winning this war. Yes, as you say, Gulliver, it, it is a very mixed picture in, in parts of Ukraine, different parts of Ukraine. Where you are, we see the, the people out there behind you. Very different picture in the east. Uh, overall, militarily, how could we say that the, this war is progressing? Uh, the Ukrainians have clearly pushed back troops around Kiev and in other areas, but it's a very different picture in other areas, isn't it? Yes, at the moment, the Russian forces are concentrating their efforts on trying to take control of the whole of Luhansk region, which is one of the two regions that make up the Donbass. And Russia is now in control of about 90% of that region. There's basically just two major towns that Russia has not taken, Severodonetsk and neighbouring Lysychansk. And Severodonetsk is under pretty heavy bombardment, Lysychansk too. And then as part of the effort to take Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, you've got towns in Donetsk region like Bakhmut, which have been shelled, and the road between Bakhmut and Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, as the Russians try to, it seems like what they're trying to do is encircle Ukrainian forces and trap them um, in that pocket of Luhansk region that Ukrainian forces still control. And although the Russians have certainly struggled in their efforts in Donbass and by no means been able to take territory as fast as they appeared to have planned to, they have in the last few days been making incremental progress, though the Ukrainian general staff said last Last night that it had repelled a ground offensive by Russian troops to actually enter the center of Severodonetsk and it had pushed them back there. But certainly uh, that uh, drive to try to take Severodonetsk is still ongoing. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed for now, France 24's Ukraine correspondent Gulliver Krag.